chapter 212, nothing but the blood of Jesus. First verse. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the cloak that makes me white as snow. No other count I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm like a bird. For my part in this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other count I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. On the third verse. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the throne that makes me white as soul. No other bound I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. On the last verse is 73. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other count I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, if we look in your heart, amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be in God's house today. Um, look at your bulletin. Next week we have a missionary that is involved with the Bible distribution. He's out of Springfield, uh, Missouri. So he'll be here next week for Sunday school and seminar services. And look for some other things going on this year. Also, Mrs. Windsor uh, sent me a, an ask for prayer. She was coming to church with one of her best friends. It's in the emergency room, and they're having a hard time finding blood pressure. So that she's rushing there to get her to be with her family and encourage them. So definitely pray for Mrs. Winters and then our other uh, people that we know that's at our church and our branches. So Brother Bob, Brother Jeff, you'll be so kind to come. We'll take our morning offering. Remember this, we tithe for our offering. We tithe for our honest. We give offerings for our love. As we go to the Lord in prayer, Brother Jeff, can you take us to the Lord's song, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with honor, praise, and glory. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and the ultimate sacrifice he made. And dear Lord, we are thankful that we managed to make it through a week. Some of us, it was harder than others. And dear Lord, we pray that the week ahead is easier on some than it will be on others. And we know that there are challenges ahead, Lord. We also know that through your word, that we can hear ways meeting those challenges and overcoming because you're still on your throne. No matter what this world throws at us, no matter what, what, what we deal with, you're still on your throne. You're still God, and you always have our back. So, dear Lord, we ask that you watch over everyone in this house, that you, you, you lead them and guide them through the week ahead, and that those that give the day, that blessing go forth and bless others. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Lord, thank God we're near to the heart of God. But open up your bulletins. I want to uh, let you look at something, and I hope you're you look at those. I put a lot of pictures in there because I'm attracted to pictures, and the, the letters are big, so hopefully you get those. But um, but we're putting different things about lists. I hope you take them and you take and take advantage of them. A couple weeks ago, we talked. I mentioned there on those about how to pray for families, how to pray for kids going to school. This week is how to pray with results. Have you ever prayed and thought, man, there's just nothing happening? Well, here's this, some things to think about. First of all, base your prayer on God's word. That's out of 1 John chapter 5. And then also submerge your prayers in faith. Without faith, nothing can happen. And then stop fear in its tracks. Remember that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. And so don't listen to Satan. He's going to tell you, don't talk to God. God can't answer your prayers. Don't listen to him. Because remember, God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and think. And then you spiritualize. Lord, show me things from your word that I can see through your help. Then testify about God being able. And in Revelation chapter 12, they overcame him, they overcame him with the blood lamb in their testimony. Testify. Talk about how good God is. You know, sometimes talking about what God can do is more medicine to ourselves than anything else. Then also, get on the giving end. Learn to give, not just of your time, not just of your talents, but of your treasures. You know what? Be a channel. Be a channel for God to use in a special way. And so those are some things to think about. I hope you're taking advantage of those different things. How to pray with results. Let's all stand once again to our number 354. Hymn number 354. What a friend we have in Jesus. On the first verse. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh. Oh, 
Luke chapter 10. If there's one thing that we need more than anything else right now is prayer. Prayer changes things. It encourages people. It lifts the spirits. It blesses those that are around us. To see God work in supernatural ways only stirs us up to think if God can do this, what else can he do? Um, it's just amazing how God works. Sunday school, we're talking about how prayer um, helps us not to waste time. Then this morning we're going to talk about prayer in Luke chapter 10. Um, I was talked very briefly to a preacher friend of mine up in Kansas City, and he asked me this. He said, have you looked at Luke chapter 10 lately? I said, no, not really. And he said, I want you to look at where it's at and what happens there in a town called Bethany. And to think about where's God's people, have they had a Bethany moment? And we'll see that in just a moment, but the aspect about prayer is important. The aspect of spending time with Jesus should be paramount over everything else that's going on in our lives. In John chapter 10, we look at verse 38, and it says this. And it came to pass as they went, as they went, they, that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bitter therefore that she helped me. Here she's having a little pity party. Lord, don't you even care? Don't you understand? I'm doing all the work. Look at the sweat upon my brow. Look how hot it is. Look at all the things I'm doing. And all she wants to do is sit. What's wrong with that woman? Can you please tell her to get up and help? And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. As we analyze our lives, you think that maybe that because we are so busy with everything else, it just adds to the care and trouble of our lives. The fact is this, is that Martha was doing nothing wrong, but Jesus wanted to highlight the contrast. We get so busy doing that we forget to receive. It says in verse 42, but one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. One thing is needful. It's not the fact that the dinner was on and everything was on, but Jesus says, look, one thing is important right now. And she's made that choice. See, it's an aspect of Christianity that we're so caught up with doing, we forget to sit down and receive. One thing is needful. I don't know about you, if a boss told me, Jim, I just want you to do one thing today, guess what? My day is going to be pretty good. Now, if they give me a list of about 10 to 15 things, which is normal the case, I'm going to say, uh, what do you want done first? And I'll try to do what I can. I'll work the rest on tomorrow. The problem is tomorrow, there's more than 12, 15, 20 more things are added on. And the frustration going on throughout the week. One thing is needful. And she's chosen the right thing. The aspect about prayer, the aspect of having that moment of choosing the right thing to do comes about spending time with God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll see what God would have for us this morning. Father God, we love you this morning. And thank you for what who you are and what you do. And Father, this morning we do pray for the friend of Mrs. Windsor at this time. Lord, I praise the great physician that you would intercede. 
And Lord, thank God for good friends. And I pray, God, you'd bless them in a special way. Thank you, Lord, that we're here in this place to gather together, Lord, to sing. And Lord, as a pastor, there's nothing that brings more joy than to hear your people sing. And Father, we're not worried about the notes. We're not worried about trying to stay on tune. We're just worried about singing out to you. And Lord, just the excitement to hear God's people sing. And Lord, now we come to sit at your table to feed us from the word of life, to make something important today. We've gathered around your table for one thing, the needful thing. Lord, for that to happen, Lord, I don't know about anybody else, but my, my mind needs to settle down. And Lord, let me just be able to just focus. Let me just to think about you, to think about who you are and what reason you have me here at this particular place. And for that, I pray that we would all be able just to take a breath and say, may your will be done in our lives, Lord. Father, I pray for Jim Fryer to sit down and Jesus Christ take over. Lord, I ask the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be truly acceptable unto you. The Father, that we can be able to say it's been good to be in your house. To take that one thing that we're here for, take it and share it with the world. To overcome the evil one, not just with the blood that was shed for us, but by our own testimony. Of look at what God has done to God be the glory. And Father, be honoring here today and encourage us. And Lord, we do ask that once we leave this place, we can all say it has been good to be in the house of God. So help us today. And let's think about one thing that's needful. Help us, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. The aspect of what's needful. As we look across the community, we look across what we see on the news, we look across what's happening around the world, we're in a needful society, aren't we? And the, you look at, are they needing food? Yes, they need clothes. Yes, they need housing. Yes, they need this, that, and the other. But those are temporary. What they need is something that's eternal. They need to be able to meet the King of Kings and Lord of Lords as he strolls through, this, through their community. So how does he do that to you and I? By shining our light in the world. Through our sphere of influence, through our stores and through our jobs and through our friends and as we go through our neighborhoods. The one thing that is need, need, needful is Jesus Christ. And how are we going to do that? By praying. By praying. See, the Bible is filled with many promises for Christians. John 14, 13 and 14 says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 15, 7 says, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. 1 John 3, 22 reads, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 5, 14 and 15, 5, 14 and 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Matthew 7 says, Ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 21, 22 says, And of all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. James 5, 16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth not. But here's the, the problem in our lives. James 4, 2. You have not, because you ask not. 8,000 promises. Coupons for eternity, to help us get through everyday life, to help us to get through all the struggles we're going through. We can quote scripture after scripture after scripture, but it does no good because we're so busy that we don't take time to let it sink in and minister to us 
And then us being a channel of God, that we take that word and it goes throughout the world. It goes to the people that need it the most. So we're going to look at some people that need the aspect about praying. First of all, people in trouble. Do you know anybody that's in trouble? All of us do. Look at Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Verse 9 says this. Verse 6. Psalms 34, verse 6 says this. Look at the very first word of this verse. What does it say? This. So just put you, so you can say, this verse is about my name, is about my life. This poor man. Are we all, can we all say we can relate to this poor person? Okay. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of what? All his troubles. One thing is needful. People are troubled. They're troubled with finances. They're troubled with jobs. They're troubled with relationships. They're troubled in the home. They're troubled in society. They're troubled with the political system out there. They're troubled with this, that, and the other, plus that, what things we don't even know about. They're troubled. But one thing is needful is to pray. For David, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, I, pray, I cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me, or delivered me out of all my troubles. Also, we all need wisdom. Look at James chapter 1, James chapter 1. One thing is needful, to pray when we're in trouble. James chapter 1, look at verse 5, says this. If any man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abraith not and it shall be given you. So what is wisdom? It's the ability to take the word of God and all of its principles with the Holy Spirit's guidance into our lives to be able to take what we know and what we hear and apply it to our lives. All of us need wisdom. And that is a promise that God gives to anybody and everybody that's seeking after him. The wisdom, the ability to be able to make the right decisions at the right time for the right purpose. Wisdom. This one thing we need to do. We need to pray when we're in trouble, but this also we need to ask for wisdom in order to make it in our lives. Also, look at Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I was talking to a preacher friend of mine. And he said, Brother Jimmy, I just want to let you know I'm quitting the ministry. Okay, what's going on? And related to just a bunch of different things, he's just wore out. He said, don't try to convince me I'm, I, need to do, I don't need to do this. I said, brother, I'm, I'm listening to you. Because I want you to do what God wants you to do. I said, we're going to read some scripture. We're going to pray as we always do. He said, I just don't think I have enough ability to go any further. I don't feel like in a spiritual sense I can pick myself up and hold my head up high with the confidence I need to have to serve the Lord. Luke 11 says this. Look at verse 11 through 13 says this. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a fit? Will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? He gives a, a simple illustration. As a father, you're going to do your best to give your children what they need. 
And he gives it, I mean, when you think about this, I'm not going to give anybody a serpent, I promise you. I'm not going to give you a scorpion. I'm not going to give you anything. I'm going to give you those things that are substantial to take care of your needs. And look what he says. And ye that which being evil say, well, I'm an evil person. No, he's talking about the Adamic nature. Because the Adamic nature, there's a temptation. You see enough of the wickedness out there when it comes to of the acts upon children in our world. It's horrible. And it's only getting worse. But although you're evil, you know how to give good things. How much more your father who loves you, cares about you, going to give you exactly what you need through the person and the power of the Holy Spirit? We need power. We need the ability to get up and move forward. The ability to stand up when everything is draining us. As he was telling me all the things that was hitting him right and left, like everywhere is at, it just it just didn't stop. And we went back and forth on some things. He said some of that stuff now. I just feel like it just seems like it's cliche. It doesn't even mean real to me, brother Fryer. And this first came to my mind. I said, "Have you asked for the Holy Spirit's help?" No. And he said, don't preach. I mean, I said, I'm not going to preach at you. But the thing is this. If we need the power to do the work of God or even survive in this world today, then we need to tap into him. Now, many of us have these things called leashes or they call them phones. Have you ever had a phone, you that have a phone, have a charger? And you plug the charger into the, the electric socket and you think you plugged that phone into that, that cord. You're down to a few percent, and you say, okay, give me a couple hours, I'll have a full battery. And then you come back to your phone, zero percent, what happened? It wasn't properly placed in there. It looked good, but it had no ability to receive the resources because it wasn't the right, the right connection. And as believers, we see it over and over and over again, where Christians are struggling. It's tough out there. Families are, I mean, they're struggling with all the satanic attacks that's after them. And sometimes they want to say, you know what? I just completely give up. It's just not worth it. Just leave me alone. One thing is needful. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. Also, Look at Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Look at verses 23 and 24. Psalms 139. Verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And can I say this? I've worked with kids and teenagers enough. When you look at them and that, well, I'm in love. And I'm in love. How do you know? Well, I know my heart. Well, the Bible says no man knows their heart because it's desperately wicked. So you've got to go to the one that created the heart. It says this, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. That's one thing that's needful for, needful for us is this. We've got to be cleansed. We have to have those things in our lives that, have, that, are, that are starting to ruin our, our testimony. We need to get that stuff out of there. But many times we can be so caught up with the trees we can't see the forest. That's why I said, Lord, the Lord that has a better perspective said, Lord, look through my life and check out what's, what's in there. Is there something that's not right? Show me. And then help remove that from my life so that this way I can be better off in my own personal life and my testimony can be stronger. Martha, you're awful busy. But Mary's choosing the right thing. 
And part of the right thing is saying, Lord, there's just something that's not right. Show me. Have you ever had a car and it just didn't run right? <laughs> you take it to a mechanic and they do some checking and they fix it and it runs a whole lot better. You don't throw the engine away. You just try to make sure the things that's causing the problems to be able to be eradicated or taken out to be able to allow it to be fixed. The problem with that as well as other things, you're going to have to get it checked over over and over and over and over again because that's the second law of thermodynamics. And as believers, one thing is needful is to confess our sins. And Lord, here I am, lock, stock, and barrel, do a complete cleansing of my life. Show me what I need. Lord, get it out of my life. It's needful. But then also, look at Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, verse 13. It says, Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Have you ever been on a trip and then you start listening to all the reports as you're traveling? For me, it's Atlanta, Georgia. And you hear about this traffic jam and this accident and this situation, this situation, this situation. And all of a sudden thinking, if I find a way out of there without going five hours out of the way, I'm going to do that. Moses saying, Lord, you have to show me the way. I have no idea how to get to that point. And as I believe, there's only one that knows the way, and that's God. So we've got to follow the pathway that he gives to us. Moses says, Lord, I'll, if you show me the way, I'll do it. And then God says, okay, if you do what I ask, I'll give you my presence. And more than my presence, I'm going to give you the ability to say, you know what? It's okay, it's in God's hands. And I will tell you that throughout the ministry of being, from, from being saved until now, there have been those times where I felt like I was trying to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. God says, what are you doing? Give it to me. But God, I have to know. God says, let me take care of that. Just trust me. Give it to me. And I will tell you what my problem is. Not, it's true confession time here at the church today. Here's one of my problems. I give those problems to the Lord and then I'm uncomfortable because I'm not used to being free. I'm not used to be able to have that freedom to, 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 be, able to be able to rest. And what I do is I say, okay, God, give me that back. I feel much better. So that doesn't make any sense. How many of us would much rather deal with our problems than give them to God? Because we're so used to trying to figure things out ourselves. Instead of saying, okay, God, it's all yours. I have no clue how this is going to work out. I need you to take care of that. That's why a lot of folks don't sleep at night. Because you're trying to figure things out. We have no answers. We've got no rest. Why? Because we don't know which way to go. That's why we give it to God. And then lastly, look at Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. We use this first in Sunday school. First one says this. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Martha says, hey, can someone get the bowls? Someone get the plates? Someone get the silverware? 
some get the, the uh, food? Can someone get the salt and pepper? Can someone get the ketchup and mustard? Can someone make sure there's napkins on the table? Hey, come on, help me. I've got to get this done. I have to get it done because Jesus is here. And if she looks and says, what are you doing? Get up! I need help! Jesus, would you please tell her to get up and help me? And Jesus calmly says, Martha, Martha, you're coming about with so many different things. She's chosen the right thing. Let me ask you a question. What are you cumbered about today? That you're trying to figure it all out. You're trying to get the edge on those different things. You're trying to get all the answers and all the solutions. And you want to be able to be the Superman that says, I can handle it all. Jesus says, you're on the wrong end of it this time. Let me take care of it. And listen to me. Well, there's one thing that's important. That's me in your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. With head bowed and eyes closed, Christians praying. Let me ask a couple questions. First question is, hey, Pastor, I know that I know that I know I'm on my way to heaven. I am born again. Can I see your hands of testimony? God bless you. I appreciate that. The Bible says that the redeemed of the Lord say so. Second question is, say, hey, Pastor, something in the message spoke to my heart. Pastor, I'm struggling. I don't know what to do. I'm just wore out physically and mentally. I'm fatigued. I'm just barely getting by. Preacher, the message was for me this morning. Would you please pray for me? Can I see your hand? I know my hand was up. I definitely need this morning. You may put your hands down. What I'm doing is I'm going to pray. Then we're going to stand. And there'll be a music, there'll be an invitation song here. If you need these no fashion altar, it's here or at your seat. The Bible says that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's here. Why don't you talk to him? Maybe you just need to see Jesus. Help. I need help. And Lord, I've tried and failed. And I'm calling for you because I can't do it anymore by myself. Talk to him. He loves you. He cares about you. He sees. And he knows that we are but dust. So spend the time with him this morning. Father, we gave the message. And Lord, how you change things around. May you be glorified. Help us, dear Father, to understand that there's times of all the work and everything, but there's one thing that's needful. And that's Jesus Christ. Lord, intercede where People need to be ministered to. Comfort those that are struggling. Guide and direct those folks that are seeking. Does someone here not be saved? May they be saved. And Father, we want you to be pleased and you want to be glorified. Bless this invitation, Jesus. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand with head bowed and eyes closed. Christians praying. We need to use no fashion altars here. You may be seated with head bowed and eyes closed. Christians praying.
Well, praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Amen. Folks, let me just encourage you. Keep your heads up. Jesus is coming back. Amen. Amen. I wish he'd come right now. I'm tired. I'm wore out. Come on, Lord. I'm ready. But just keep your heads up and keep marching forward one step at a time. That, that invitation song was called Faith is the Victory that Overcomes the World. It's your faith. And so uh, how much faith do you need to have? Just a little mustard seed. So you need much. Just keep on keeping on, one step at a time. As a family, we encourage one another. We pick each other up. We support each other. We pray for one another. Until Jesus Christ come, we keep on keeping on until we hear the shout and the trumpet blows. We leave this old world and we say farewell, farewell. Thank God it's over. Amen for that. Amen. And so don't forget tonight, 530 Bible study. And then Wednesday night, we'll have services at 7 o'clock. I just want to tell you, I love you and appreciate you so much. Let's all stand as we are dismissed. And Brother Dalton, can you take us to the Lord's throne, please? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We give you praise today. We give you glory and honor and we thank you for your presence here in this meeting today, for your word, for the saints, for the faith that you've given to us. It has been good to be in your house again today. Lord, bring us back at the next appointed time. May we leave here now, Lord, reminded of who we are, what we're to be doing, again, for your glory and all the church says. Amen. Amen. Amen.